Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. Yeah, it's just a fire extinguisher, but this video is gonna be a lot more interesting than you than you think. My friend Kevin over at Commonwealth Picker got me another treasure. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, maybe you haven't seen the video of the old Ford wheel that I restored. I'll leave a link to that. Kevin is a picker. He's one of these guys that can go to a yard sale and find treasures amid all the trash. He's got an eBay store and shares a lot of cool stuff with his audience. If you're into that, definitely go check him out. We're going to restore it. We're also going to test it because I can charge this the way it was originally made to be used and we can see how it works. There's some really interesting stuff on how this is made. Uh, I had to, to look at this for a while before I figured out, with some help talking to some friends, how this thing actually is, is put together. So let's take a closer look at this thing. Check out that nice brass embossed plate on it. Here's one thing I think is really cool. To charge, use one and a half pounds of bicarbonate of soda. That's just baking soda. Dissolved in two and a half gallons of cold water. Then you use four fluid ounces of sulfuric acid in an eight ounce bottle. Most people know when you mix baking soda and acid, you get a big reaction. Well, that's what charges this fire extinguisher. So there's a little bottle of acid sitting up here. There's a bunch of baking soda sitting right here. And when you want to use the fire extinguisher, you flip it over. The baking soda is all going to come down. The acid's going to dump out. It's all going to mix together. This thing's going to go under pressure and it's going to start shooting out of the hose. How cool is that? So let's do a mini version of what's going on in that fire extinguisher. So this is a half batch. There's some baking soda. Water. Acid, 60 cc's. So let me just dump this in here. No, not right here. Let's go outside. Not terribly impressive. Pretty rapid reaction. If you squeeze that down to a tiny little opening, you're going to build up pressure and you're going to shoot that pressure out over time. But there's more that's really interesting about this. See, this thing is, is riveted copper. So let's look inside. This cage is for holding the acid bottle. But I may have a bottle that's going to work perfect for this. So if you take a look inside, the inside is not copper. So there's a container in a container here. You can't see the inside of any rivets or anything in there. So uh, I was thinking, how did they build this? So take a second and try to figure this out with me. If you look at the bottom, yeah, that's a little steel, probably carrying handle or something. Um, and you can see the bottom of the tank there bowed out to hold some pressure, but there's no, there's no rivets or anything to be seen. A couple rivets there and then a, a rivet seam coming right up the center to the top here there's a, uh, a place to hang it and then this is riveted on uh, that's just the out the discharge hose uh, this is the worst footage on YouTube come on there you can see the uh, there's a little screen there at the discharge that just connects with this which comes down to the hose. Another thing I want to show you is that you see that hole there? So that's a problem. That means the contents are not being held within the inner container. I don't know if it's showing up on camera but the inside of this container looks like lead. Yeah, so how did they do that? How did they put this together? Did they, did they take a lead container and then and then wrap this copper around it and then somehow rivet it together? Well, well, no, you'd see the rivets on the inside. Well, the answer is actually pretty simple when you finally hear it. Um, they, they melted the lead in there. Uh, so basically, they got all this hot and probably rolled it and distributed the lead throughout the inside of the container. So that hole, uh, what I need to do is just melt some lead onto that area, which is going to be very tough to film, but I don't think it's going to be that hard to do. So let's give that a try. That would be awesome if I could fix this thing that easily. Sorry, there's really no way to, to film this. I would need four hands and yeah. Um, what I'm using is a, a carbide burr and uh, just scraping that area to get it down to fresh lead. 
Yeah, that metal is definitely lead, very soft. So that's what it looks like after scraping it with the carbide burr. This is an old diving weight, and I'm just gonna cut a piece of lead off of this. Try not to send it across the shop into that black hole. No, we got it. There, that's plenty of lead to make up that hole. But I'm just gonna take a torch and heat up that area and see if it will melt the lead. Not only did this not work, this actually made a dangerous situation. I'm now putting propane into the bottle, and when enough oxygen is present, if I relight it, I could actually get somewhat of an explosion. All right, so here's the plan. I'm gonna heat up the outside, get that area good and hot, and then I'm gonna take a soldering iron and actually heat directly on that spot and hopefully melt that into, into nice continuous molten lead. And then when it solidifies, it'll be perfectly sealed up. Let's see how this works. Gotta get the cameras out of the way. I was able to get it to totally melt. Looks great, actually. Now the gasket on this thing is hard as a rock and very brittle. So that's certainly not gonna seal. So let's see if we can get that out of there. It's amazing that that used to be rubber. There are parts of it that are still flexible, but most of it's just as brittle as it can be. All right, so I need a new gasket. And it looks like it needs to be about 2.8 on the inside. It's 3.535. And it certainly doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so that is the radius. So I can just set my calipers here. Uh, that will give me a diameter of the 3.535 that I need. Here's an old piece of rubber. It's not that old, it's nice and pliable. Should make a good seal. I think that's gonna work just fine. So we're up in my stable, which is a wreck, taken over by barn swallows, but um, the guy who used to live here collected these antique bottles and left them all. And I'm thinking maybe I'll be able to find one that will fit this just right. So I found this bottle. It won't fit in like that, but if you put it in from the side, it's very tight and it will go into the extinguisher and it's held securely. It's just the right height so that these keep it so that when you flip it upside down, the, the glass isn't gonna move. So I think I got it. It's pretty heavy glass, so it's not gonna break easily. Talk about trying to jinx yourself. There you go, held very securely. Let's go ahead and charge this thing up. I'm gonna put in the baking soda. Following the recipe on the label, that's a pound and a half. And now two and a half gallons of water. So that's where we are. Now I'm gonna work this bottle down in here. There, perfect. Now, where can I get some acid? Well, what I've got here is battery acid. I drained this out of uh, some batteries that died. So four ounces equals 120 mLs. Right there. 
with having to kind of wobble and work that thing down in there, I don't want to put the acid in and do that. That's probably how you would normally do it if this would drop right in. Uh, I am afraid I would splash some of the acid out and start a reaction. I'm pretty sure I can pour this okay, though. There you can see the acid in the glass jar and then the sodium bicarbonate around it. All right, there you go. This guy's ready. Now we just need a fire to put out. All right, that's a pretty good fire there. I can tell you that dumping a five gallon bucket of water on it would not put it out. I mean, it would make a big dent in it, but I'm hoping that this will easily put it out and I'll have a bunch left over. I'm also gonna be interested to see how far this thing will shoot. So to activate it, you just turn it over. It's kinda working. So it sprays about 15 to 20 feet, uh, 5 to 6 meters, and it ended up spraying a good stream for about 3 minutes. This is significantly better than trying to do buckets. Being able to aim and specifically direct the, the water to where you want it to be in the fire makes it far more effective at putting the fire out. It's kind of a cool system. It's like I have water pressure, but it's all self-contained. Compared to using buckets, which was the standard before these were invented, this is far superior at being able to put out a fire and to have on standby at any moment. The way it pressurizes is also very ingenious because it's chemistry, it's fail-safe. When you mix that acid in baking soda, it's going to generate pressure. It's like having a garden hose without a power source. You don't need a well pump. You don't even need the fire extinguisher to be sealed perfectly because it's going to generate pressure on its own as opposed to a modern fire extinguisher, which of course, when functioning correctly, is much more impressive than this. Sometimes those modern fire extinguishers lose their pressure and you might go to grab it and use it and it won't do anything. This will generate pressure, period. Uh, there's no pump to fail, there's nothing, there's just no reason that it's not going to generate pressure and provide you with at least somewhat of a powered stream to put the fire out. Well, I'd say it's not really effective as an extinguisher anymore, though it is still spraying. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say. After all my recent Johnson videos and Johnson jokes, <laughs> there's got to be something to say for that. <laughs> Let's see how much is left in this thing. Probably not even half a gallon left. That was quite effective, actually. I mean, compared to just trying to use a bucket, that, that that's way better that you can spray it, you can direct it, you know, you can really target your fire. Now, obviously, if I really wanted to put this out, once I had it knocked down, I would have spread it out and really sprayed everything down. I'm sure there are some areas under there that are still probably gonna reignite. Okay, so you can actually see there's sodium bicarb on the outside of that bottle and inside of it. And there's a little sodium bicarb left in the tank. So not much. That's a, that's really a perfect recipe. Um, it used up all the acid. Uh, what's left is perfectly safe to handle and touch. Nothing is acidic anymore because there's an excess of sodium bicarb. Did you guys think that fire was out? I didn't do anything else to it. I come back to this. So there was still an ember in there and it relit and continued burning. I don't really want to change the hose. It looks old. You really wouldn't be able to get a new hose that looks like this. 
at least that I know of. And this is crimped on, so I'm going to keep the hose. Well, the paint wasn't sticking to it well at all. I brushed it and it continues to look terrible. So uh, I'm gonna wipe this down with mineral spirits and then I'm gonna degrease it and we'll try this again. I am using POR 15 cleaner degreaser. For good measure on this one, I'm gonna do a self etching primer and hopefully this is gonna stick better. Oh yeah, yeah, I don't see it beating up at all. Yep, most of painting is surface prep. Gotta get that right or you may as well not do it. But the back here is pretty rough. You know, this stuff is quite thick and I don't think just rubbing it with Brasso is gonna work. Straight Brasso. See where it's copper, it, it shines it up really quickly. But where that green stuff is, just doesn't want to come off. So, let me see what happens if I hit it with steel wool. And even that barely takes that stuff off. Yeah, 400 grit's too little. But here's some 220 grit paper. Man, that surprises me. Even with 220, and I'm scratching the copper quite a bit, that does not want to come off. just want to see what the Brasso will do to that copper. Now, I've scratched it too much. I'd have to uh, take it up through grits of sandpaper now. So that's not a great option. How about a Dremel tool? That's not great either. Probably someone out there who knows exactly what the best way to deal with this is and they're yelling at the screen right now that I'm an idiot. And they're probably right. I'm gonna turn to Google. Google says to use a mixture of flour, salt, and vinegar. Put it on there for like half an hour and then wash it off. And you know, it's the internet. It's gotta be right. So this is a quarter cup of salt, a quarter cup of flour, and actually a quarter cup of vinegar. Made a nice paste. And I think the flour is just to make it solidify. The salt and the vinegar are gonna kind of eat away at this and make it easier to remove, I hope. Holly, stay here. Holly. definitely working. I'm just going to agitate it and leave it on there a little bit. I think there's more to come off, but the salt is almost acting like an abrasive. So just rubbing it around is loosening a lot of it up. It's interesting, the green has gone all throughout the, the paste. Got most of it off. I think I'm going to need to mix up some more. I want to see if I should do the whole thing or if I'm going to be able to buff this together. Yep, need to do the whole thing.
Well, maybe you think I would have learned on the first one. I did degrease this, but uh, it's not sticking well. So I am taking the paint back off. And I think what I'm gonna do is use some brake cleaner directly on the, on the parts that are gonna be red. So I'm just cleaning it off with mineral spirits and we will try this again. This part up here is working fine. Still isn't sticking right. See it beating up in there? All right. All right, I'm sure there are better ways to do this. Here's my thinking here. The nail polish actually sticks to it just fine, uh, so I'm using it as a primer. It's not the same color. I got it off of the letters because getting it off with acetone is super easy, and I didn't know how it would be getting it off compared to the spray paint. The spray paint I'm going to take off with a Dremel tool. That's my thinking. I'm sure there are better ways, but this is what I'm doing.
Well, that was a really fun restoration. Like most things that I seem to do, took a lot longer than I was expecting, but uh, the results are pretty good. Pretty happy with it. In retrospect, I should have just painted that carefully with the proper paint and a brush. Um, I thought since it was raised letters, it would be easier to do it the way I did it. Uh, probably not. Uh, but either way, it came out good and um, I'm pretty happy with it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.